Have you heard about our guy, Tobias Merriweather? Uh, it's been great. Somebody um, that, are, that really sticks out is Tobias. You know, making such a big jump from last year to now and challenging him. It's like all the work last year mentally, you know, because he has the physical part and he's made huge strides and he's become a leader for us. This guy's one of the top receivers in the nation. I hear he's tall, big body, fast. Welcome back to CFB Nation. I'm your host, Nino Brown. You're watching Debbie Dollins. I got my co-host in the building today, Mr. Get It Done, D-Now. Hot, fresh off the plane. How we doing, my man? It was a long day. A lot of people watching. <laughs> yeah, sometimes, you know, those can be the funniest moments, you know. You get caught up in the airplane, uh, airport for a while. What else is better to do than people watch, right? Exactly. But we're going to be diving in to a guy that I, I, I'm been a fan of i know last year wasn't his greatest you know highlight reel well he did have a highlight catch but it wasn't a highlight reel uh, or highlights for him in a year but a lot of guys in this community are kind of down on uh, this gentleman but i think we're gonna let him know why we think he he can step up and be a debbie dollar and that's gonna be tobias mayweather uh notre dame uh wide receiver now listen all right six four 186 pounds uh, he's a four-star recruit coming out of union high school he was the 14th ranked wide receiver in the 2022 class. Okay, uh, three years at Union, 97 receptions, 1,583 yards, 13 touchdowns, in about 27 games. Uh, was two sport athlete, did track. Man got some wheels, right? 100 meter sub 11, 200 meters like 22, and then he also did the 400 meter. So it's not just a uh, shot out of a cannon, and he ain't got no, you know, no fuel for the end. He can do the long distance. So what are your thoughts on his speed coming out of high school? Uh, like you said, anything under 11 as a 17, 18 year old, that's crazy fast. Yeah. So, and, and, and from what I heard, uh, coming in as at 186, but he's up to about 205 now and he's still keeping that speed. So that, that, mm. that is why yeah. I think there's a, you know, one of the check marks. why I think he's going to have a breakout year this year and become one of them Debbie Dollars because he's going to be able to just, you know, be physical and blow by guys. It's going to be interesting. There's a lot of. The carousel's been turning over there in Notre Dame, but we're going to get into some things that I thought were key points at bottom, all right? We started off Rocky for Merriweather. He was the last official recruit for Brian Kelly. Kelly literally received the news of the LSU hire while Merriweather was on his visit. So it's like, whew. And you still went, like you said, he still went to, to Notre Dame, and, and, and now he's back to kind of to take over that wide receiver room. I mean, he struggled. With the playbook, he got benched during the Cal game for missing a motion call or a bot snap, and in the following week, did not play. Uh, he only had that one touchdown catch against single coverage against Stanford. It was a beauty, though. 42-yard, mm -hmm. I believe, touchdown. It was nice. He suffered a concussion in practice two weeks later, right? And then he missed, I think it was two or three weeks. So, like, not even in a game. It was just in practice. So, he, he must have took a decent shot. Um, do I think the production, I'm going to ask you as well, do you, do I think the production from Merriweather was more towards the wasted offense that Notre Dame had? You know, QB's, you know, carousel. Uh, I'm, I mean, Tommy Reese's offense wasn't anything special, right? I think you're going to see a change with Hartman there now. But do you think that his progression and his usage was more so because of, you know, QB carousel and the stagnant offense? Um, That one's kind of tough without, like, actually seeing him. I mean, that definitely played a part in it. But then again, you got to think, 18-year-old kid going from a simple-ish high school playbook to an advanced college one, that's a big, big learning curve. So that yeah. could also have played a, a role in it. I mean, I was also thinking that, like, I know we're talking about Merriwood, but I thought Styles was going to take that next step last year because I liked Styles in that bowl game mm -hmm. to close out the fellow, uh, previous season. It didn't seem like anybody on Notre Dame besides Mayer took that step. I mean, he was yeah. – the targets were out there. They were going to Mayer. But this kid, he, he's got a lot. And, like, I watched a few interviews with uh, the spring game and now coming into summer practices with the coaching staff. And, and, and Chanty stuck. He's been talking a lot about him, talking about what we're going to talk about, how long and smooth he is. He's fluid. He's got a feel for the game, right? Obviously, those 50-50 balls, you're at 204, 6'4". You can go up there, you know, use your body shield. He's not a burner, but he got speed, and he got the long speed, like you mentioned, because he does the 400-meter. Uh, chews up a lot of ground in a hurry with long strides. 
He's very difficult to defend on the perimeter. And that's one thing that I like about Mary Rilla. Uh, on the outside, you know, out, you know, getting the sideline outside the hash, this guy's got it. Like, he does have body control. He probably could get a little better in his route running. But what are your thoughts in his attributes as a receiver? Um, He's what you look for as a prototypical X. I mean, big body. He's got some size now to him that he bulked up. Um, like you said, his route running could improve some. Right. Um, but those those uh, high jump balls, I mean, 6'4", he's going to jump over almost every corner right. unless there's some genetic freak themselves. <laughs> but <laughs> – yeah, uh, I mean, he does – he's got I, – I do like, though, as, as big as he is, he knows how to use his body, he uses his mm-hmm. leverage, and he can, you know, his release, he, he can mess with these defenders, even though, you know, those uh, those twitchy guys. And he gets his separation almost, you know, instantly. It, it's kind of, like, impressive to see for a guy that, that size off the line. Everything I'm seeing in camp – he I mean, I know it's camp, okay? Right. I'm not going to get too excited. I know you're the first one to tell me, hey, 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 it's camp, you know, relax. But – He's been blown by, you know, these guys. And they got pads on. They're, you know, they're not just running in shorts no more. So, he's been getting off the line quickly. So, I'm excited to see it. That was a crazy stat that I had one instance of, and you brought it up to me, that there was multiple mm-hmm. cases of this. So, m- one that I had and I noticed was Wolf Fuller was a case of a guy that's, you know, going into the freshman year that had a lot of hype that didn't really produce, right? He only caught six passes for 160 yards and one touchdown. And that was coming from – the guy, Tommy Reese, as the QB back then, all right? And then a year later, when Everett Golson came in, right, Will Fuller took off 1,000 yards, 15 touchdowns on 76 receptions. I believe you you got two other references. You want, you want to tell us one? Yep. So Golden Tate was also one. I think he had maybe like eight receptions, 100-some yards, and a touchdown. But then Equinamia St. Brown really struggled his freshman year. Right. Only one reception for eight yards. But there's light at the end of the tunnel. All these guys came back the following year, had 900-plus yards receiving and nine-plus touchdowns. So if he can follow that, I mean, Notre Dame will be eaten right there. Yeah, And, you know, May is gone. He went to the NFL. We spoke about him. I did, you know, touched on Styles a little bit. He hit the portal, so he's not there either. Mm -hmm. And that's a young wide receiver room. I mean, we mentioned that Tyree, who was a running back, he's playing in the slot now as a wide receiver. They got the freshman that I like a lot in Jaden Grayhouse, right? Um, yep. And there's Jaden Thomas and then, you know, the junior, uh, Deion Cozy. So I think this is like he's taking over the leadership role. I think he's going to be the number one target for Sam Hartman. I think there's a little bit more, in my opinion, talent spread out through all the receiving call. It's not just channeled through one tight end uh, who's yep. the main guy. Although they, they got a, a stacked – tight end class, uh, class in there as well. Holden stays, and they got Eli uh, Reardon as the, the backups, too. I, I'm assuming Mitchell Evans is going to be the guy. I, I'm assuming. Yeah. But, I yeah. think this year it's not as tight end heavy as it was last year. Right. The ball will get spread around. Exactly. And, and I, I'm hearing that it's going to be running back by committee. I know the young guys are eating. So I think the most consistent guy out there from what's going from the end of the season, you know, after he came back from the concussion – to spring, to some of, you know, ball now, it's Tobias Merriweather. I mean, and he's got all the attributes. Like I said, he was ranked, I think it was, uh, I believe it was, was it 14th in his class? Yep, yeah, 14 by receiver in 2022 class. So we've seen guys in that pack rise up and not, you know, kind of going on the radar and then rise up to be a top 10 or a top seven in that class when it all was said and done. So I'm all in on it, Debbie Donald, Tobias Merriweather. Yeah, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to throw this in. So my wife, big Notre Dame fan, so I've oh, watched right. them for the last 10, 15 years. And today, while I was at the airport, I kind of started thinking back of all the wide receivers. And I came across one that he kind of reminds me of watching his tape. And I hate doing comps, you know this, but Michael Floyd. Okay. Um, okay. Hey. Same bottle type. Um, struggled with routes at the beginning of his career, but it ended up clicking. Had a pretty decent NFL career for a little bit before he got in his own way. But yeah, if I had to comp someone Notre Dame wise, yeah, we got would a be ring. Comp for him. Didn't he get a ring with my Patriots? Uh, did he? I think yes, he, got he a did. Ring with my yes, Patriots. he did. Yeah. Hey, what's funny is my comp was a mixture of Michael Floyd and T. Higgins. Right? None oh, of them cool. guys 
did like anything ex- exponential or you know extraordinary, but they were just really good receivers, right? Like mm-hmm. you know, Justin Ross and Clemson had like the instantaneous playmaker ability, the stop and go speed, right? T. Higgins had speed, and he has, but he didn't like. There was nothing that like was like, whoa. He he just was a package. I, I think yep. Tobias Fairweather is a package. He has some speed, but he doesn't have that that stop and go blow away speed, right? But he can still work himself to get separation. He's tall enough to win 50-50 balls. He's got them late hands, right, where he, he doesn't show DBs that he's going to grab the ball. Floyd was that kind of one of those guys, no chain, that had them late hands. Nope. Big body guy, go up and get it. It's crazy you said Floyd. I, Floyd and T. Higgins were like a mixture comp for me. I'm with it. I, I think the cards are put on the table um, for Tobias Merriweather. He's got the, tip, the prototypical QB he wants for him to have yep. a breakout year. You have a lot of inexperience around you. Outside of you know the, the, the starting running back Audric, everything out behind him and pretty much on the rest of the field behind Dion is inex- inexperienced in those positions of key you know key needs. So Merriweather's going to get peppered early if he has success. That is just going to continue. And if him and Hartman get clicking, you might as well put the ring on him as a Debbie Dallin because he, he's about to pop. Yep, hundred percent solid okay. QB like Hartman. Sky's the limit now for Tobias. And I think you know head coach. Uh, you know, Marcus wants to just – he needs this. He needs to yes. have a big offense. It's the reason why I think he brought in Hartman. This is what, year two, right? And this is yep. – this is I need – I'm in this group of who's going to be the biggest year two breakout, right? I, I think he's got a chance. There's a couple of the guys in, in, you know, that, that are in this year two bracket with new teams I think might have him beat. But Sammy Hartman could deliver. And then the guy that's going to reap the benefits of all that is Tobias Merriweather. He has all the attributes, yep. checks all the boxes. So you heard it here. CFB Nation, Debbie Downs, Mr. Get It Done, Nino Brown, we're all in. Tobias Merriweather is a Debbie Dolan. We out. Have you heard about our guy, Tobias Merriweather? Uh, It's been great. Somebody um, that that really sticks out is Tobias. You know, making such a big jump from last year to now and challenging him. It's like all the work last year mentally. You know, because he has the physical part and he's making huge strides and he's become a leader for us. This guy's one of the top receivers in the nation. I hear he's tall, big body, fast.